Hello, welcome to Math 0005 Algebra 1. We're going to begin 0005 with an introduction to informal set theory, and so I'll start with the definition of a set. A set is simply a collection of mathematical objects, and we tend to notate those using curly brackets, so that 1, 2, 3 in curly brackets means the set of the mathematical objects 1, 2, and 3. Now, sets are what we use for reasoning about unordered collections of objects, ignoring repetition. So what I mean by unordered is that the set 1, 2 is equal to the set 2, 1. The order doesn't matter. What I mean by ignoring repetition is, for example, the set containing 1 and 1 is equal to the set which just contains one. You should think of sets as a kind of thing where the only question you can ask about them is do they contain a particular thing or not? You can't ask how many times they contain a particular thing. You can't ask is this the first or the second or the third element of this set. All you can ask is whether a particular thing is in the set or not. We have some notation for the members of or elements of a set. So we use this symbol to mean that the thing X is an element of the set capital A. And we use the same symbol crossed out to mean that the thing X is not an element of the set A. And again, to give a simple example, it's true that one is an element of the set two, one but it's not true that three is an element of that set. So we use the membership symbol crossed out. There's a particular special set with no elements called the empty set, and which is written like this, with a zero crossed out. Sometimes you'll see the empty set written in a slightly different way, just as a pair of set brackets with nothing between them. The example of the set X at the bottom here is to show you that the elements of a set can be anything. There is no restriction on what the elements of a set can be. We allow any kind of mathematical object, including sets themselves, including numbers, functions, vectors, matrices, and so on. So our example here is of a set X whose elements are the empty set, the number one, the set containing the number two, and the set containing the set containing three. We're now going to talk about the definition of a subset, and we're going to use that definition of a subset to give a slightly more formal definition of when two sets are equal. So let's begin with the definition of a subset just here. A set X is a subset of the set Y, which we write like this, if and only if every element of X is also an element of Y. We then use that definition of subset to define when two sets are equal. So we say that a set X is equal to a set Y, which we write using the ordinary equality symbol, if and only if X is a subset of Y and Y is a subset of X. Finally, we say that a set X is a proper subset of a set Y, which we write like this, if and only if X is a subset of Y, but it's not equal to Y. So that means every element of X is also an element of Y, but there is an element in Y which is not in X. Let's run through some examples of subsets starting with this one here. The set on the left is a subset of the set on the right. The reason for that is that it fulfills the definition of subset written at the top there. The only element of the set on the left is the number zero, and that is also an element of the set on the right. Therefore, 
Every element in the set on the left is also an element of the set on the right, and so the set on the left is a subset of the set on the right. Our next example, the set on the left here is not a subset of the set on the right. And the reason for that is the set on the left contains an element which is not in the set on the right. Specifically, the number 2 is an element of the left-hand set, but it's not an element of the right-hand set. Finally, these two sets are equal. So let's just think carefully about the definition of equality to figure out why that is. I'm going to call the thing on the left here x, and I'm going to call the thing on the right y. Now, x is a subset of y because every element of x is also an element of y. The things which are elements of x are 1 and 2, and both of those things are elements of y. But for the same reason, y is a subset of x. The elements of y are 2 and 1, and those are also elements of x. So we've established that x is a subset of y, and y is a subset of x, and that means, according to our definition of equality, that y is equal to x. So this is the reason that equality of sets ignores repetition and ignores order. My final observation then is that for any set X, it's true that the empty set is a subset of that set X. The reason that this is true is that if you think it's false, you have to find an element of the empty set which is not an element of your set X. But you can't do that because there's no elements in the empty set. So since you can't find a counterexample the, to the definition of subset, it's true that the empty set is a subset of every set X. Finally, there's another notation which we use for specifying sets, and that's called set builder notation. To talk about set builder notation, I need to talk about properties of things. A property is something which might be true or false for a given thing. As an example, let's think about integers, whole numbers, positive or negative, then every positive or negative whole number, every integer, is even or odd. So the property of being even is something that's true or false for each integer. When we've got one of these properties, we have a special notation which we use to write down the set of all things for which that property is true. So given a set X and a property P which applies to the elements of that X, of that set X, we use this notation to mean the set of all things in the set capital X such that that property is true. For example, we might take the set capital X to be the set of integers. Traditionally, we use this blackboard bold Z to denote the set of all integers, that is, the set of all whole numbers, positive or negative. We might then take the property P to be the property that a particular integer, little x, is even. So that's a property because it's true or false for each integer. Then the set that we notate like this means the set of all integers, little x, such that the property is true. In other words, they are even. So this would be the set of all even integers which contains things like minus 4, minus 2, 4, 6, uh, a million, and so on. Finally, I'm going to end the lecture by giving part of an example of how we prove sets are equal. You'll remember from the last slide that we had a definition of set equality, which was that two sets, A and B, were equal if, and only if, a is a subset of B, and B is a subset of A. And we very often use that definition when we're proving that two sets are equal. So we prove that two sets are equal by checking first that one is a subset of the other, and then checking that the other is a subset of the first one. So here in our example, 
we will take a to be the set of all odd integers and b to be the set of all integers such that x plus 2 is odd. So that b is the set of all integers x such that x plus 2 is odd. Those are both examples of set builder notation. And in fact, a and b are equal. They're the same set. And I'm going to do half of a proof of this. Um, to do the proof, we're going to show that well, to do the proof, what we need to do is to show that A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. I will do half of that because I'm going to show that A is a subset of B. Now, again, you'll remember the definition of subset from the previous slide. To show that A is a subset of B, I have to show that every element of A is also an element of B. So we will pick an element A an element little a and big A, and then what we know is that little a is an odd integer. Now if you add an even number to an odd number, the result is odd again. So a plus 2 is also an odd integer. But if you look at the definition of our set B, it's the set of all integers such that when you add 2, you've got an odd integer. Let's say this again. Uh, B is the set of all integers x such that x plus 2 is odd. So here our integer A satisfies that A plus 2 is odd, and that means that A is in the set capital B. We've now proved that every element of the set capital A is an element of the set capital B, and therefore we've shown that A is a subset of B. Now for practice, you should show that capital B is a subset of capital A, and when you'll have done that, you'll have shown that the two sets, capital A and capital B, are equal.